Tonight on CTV News, we have reactions from an arrest over the weekend that sparked a social media conversation. Then later on, we have updates on some crime over the weekend. All that plus weather, sports, and entertainment starting right now on CTV News. Good evening and thanks for tuning in to CTV News. I'm Willis Scott. And I'm Marla Lundak. Our top story tonight concerns the arrest of a Colorado student over the weekend. We now, get, now, now go live to Bryn Carmen, who is outside of Bondi Beach Bar. Bryn, what can you tell us? Tell him to scroll the prompter. Can you, can you scroll the prompter? Uh, was to the ground by a male police officer. Now, this cell phone video has gone extremely viral in Colorado and all across the nation. Police say the officer's body cam video will be released to the public once the investigation is complete. No details tonight on when that investigation is expected to happen. Now, in response to the video, community members are planning on having a rally next Tuesday, April 18th at the Fort Collins City Council, live in Old Town, live in Old Town Fort Collins, Bring Carmen, CTV News. Thanks, Bryn. Since this happened in our own backyard, we went onto the CSU Plaza to get reactions from students. Uh, the consensus was that they uh, think the officer had a right to restrain the woman, but his actions were a bit extreme. Self-defense, but you don't have to throw it down that hard. I mean, you're a big guy going against like a little girl. You don't have to do that much. It was like a little too forceful what the cop did, like threw her to the ground, but at the same time, you shouldn't assault a police officer. Yeah, the girl, Definitely shouldn't have hit a cop, but I think the guy took it way too far of throwing her on the ground. The slamming down was a little too aggressive, but I think that if you interfere with a police officer like that, then he has the right to arrest you. <laughs> Early last evening, a storage unit caught fire by a local strip mall. According to the Poudre Fire Authority, fire, uh, firefighters extinguished a fire that burned the inside of a storage container. According to a statement by the PFA, around 7.30 Monday evening, 911 dispatchers received a call reporting a fire near a strip mall located on the west side of North College Avenue. The first PFA crew arrived at the Cottonwood Plaza strip mall located at 1415 North College Avenue six minutes after the initial call. There, firefighters found a storage container fully enveloped in flames just west of the strip mall. Just a few minutes later, firefighters had the fire under control, preventing any significant damage to the seven-unit strip mall. A couple of units within the strip mall had minor smoke and fire damage. The cause and origin of the fire remains under investigation. One person is dead and another in the hospital after a motorcycle crash Monday evening. It happened at the intersection of Swallow and College at 724. A white Tahoe crashed with one of two motorcycles while turning right onto College Avenue. The other motorcyclist laid his bike down on the road to avoid the car. The motorcyclist who hit the car was pronounced dead at the scene. The other motorcyclist was rushed to an area hospital with serious injuries. The driver of the white Tahoe wasn't hurt. The crash investigation is still in its early stages. Early Monday morning, Larimer County sheriffs engaged in a high-speed pursuit that reached 104 miles per hour and culminated in the use of spike strips and a search. The driver of the vehicle, Benjamin Weir, was arrested on 11 charges after a pursuit both in a vehicle and on foot. The female passenger, Melanie Wind, was arrested on three charges at the end of the car pursuit. After use of spike strips and a pit maneuver, the vehicle eventually came to a stop near Jefferson Avenue in Wellington, where Weir filed, fled on foot. Wind was detained by police shortly afterward. Deputies, along with the Colorado State Patrol and Fort Collins Police Services, set a perimeter around the area to search for Weir, but were unable to find him. The search was called off shortly, shortly before 5 a.m. Around 9.50 a.m., a deputy near the Burger King at Cleveland and 6th Street in Wellington was approached by a citizen and told of a suspicious man. The deputy looked into it and recognized Weir from the earlier chase and called for backup. Deputies successfully subdued their subject, suspect. Weir was then identified and taken into custody. Wind was charged with unlawful possession of a controlled substance and possession of an illegal weapon. Weir was given 11 charges, including attempted second-degree assault on police officers, third-degree assault, vehicular eluding, and displayed fictitious numbered plates. 
The Fort Collins Police Department identified and arrested a Poudre School District student who was responsible for a clown hoax last fall. On September 28, 2016, the police department was notified of a violent clown threat on social media. Over 500 students remained home from school the day after the threat was posted on Facebook. Fort Collins Police quickly determined that it wasn't credible. The student has since been expelled from the Poudre School District and charged with a Class 1 misdemeanor. Fort Collins Police wouldn't say how they identified the student or whether the student has any upcoming court appearances. You can check back to the Collegian for updates as the investigation continues. As Fort Collins and Colorado State University continue to grow, the cost of living throughout the community has seen a spike in recent years. According to the Coloradoan, existing home sales for the month of May have jumped for the third straight month. Sales of existing family, single-family homes, townhomes, condos, and co-ops increased by 1.8% according to the National Association of Realtors. This has become an issue in the hands of Colorado State more recently due to the difficulty of finding affordable housing for employees and staff of the university. In the month of February, median prices for single-family homes was $395,000. At the end of 2016, the median prices for, of monthly rent was $1,200. Tim Milligan, Vice President of External Relations, says that Colorado State wants to contribute to the issue of affordable housing. So what CSU is doing is we're taking a look at a lot of different ways that we can, maybe perhaps for the first time, be a part of a community-wide solution to try and deal with this issue. We really don't want it to go the way of places like Aspen or Boulder where you can't really live in the community that you work in. We just we want to be a live, work, play community. Some of the land that is included in the conversation is Hughes. However, Milligan doesn't want people to jump to conclusions about the iconic stadium. So what's happening at Hughes is we've asked this group called Icon Venue Group. and We've asked them, because of their expertise in development, to take a look at the Hughes property, to get public input, and to put together a process whereby private developers will come in and make suggestions on what we might do with that property. So the university doesn't plan to develop that land. We plan to have other people come in and make suggestions. CSU, CSU is hopeful that they can make a positive impact on this issue of affordable housing that can benefit the city of Fort Collins as well as the employees and staff of the university. Well, that'll do it for news. Coming up, we have a full weather forecast from Sierra Symes. Then later on, we have sports and entertainment. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Welcome back with your weather. I'm Sierra Symes. Currently it's 64 degrees outside, a wind coming out of the southeast, seven miles per hour there, and that sunset is going to be at 736. Now the wind is going to cool down uh, as we move towards our 12 p.m. hour, as well as it's mostly cloudy now, quite overcast, but that is going to clear out as we move later into the evening. Now into tonight we can expect some 30s and 20s along the western slope, 45 in Grand Junction. Up the I-25 corridor, some low 40s, 42 as we reach Denver, 39 here in Fort Collins. Over on the Eastern Plains, some uh, mid to high 30s, as well as some 40s, Sterling, Burling, Burlington, and Lamar. So into tomorrow, we are expecting some 50s and 60s along the Western Slope, 67 in Alamosa, 76 in Grand Junction. Now 78 in Pueblo, low 70s as we move towards Fort Collins up the I-25 corridor. Over on the Eastern Plains, some low 70s, 75 though in Burlington, 79 in 
Lamar. Now into tomorrow for you early birds, that sunrise is going to be at 626 in the morning. For your 9 a.m. hour, a 7 mile per hour breeze from the northwest, 53 degrees. Now the skies are going to clear up into your 12 p.m. hour, 65 and reaching 70 as we move into the 4 p.m. hour. That 7 mile per hour breeze is going to continue throughout the day. But this weather is going to continue to be beautiful through the end of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, moving into the mid to high 70s there. Friday and Saturday for those overnight lows, high 30, so bring that light jacket if you're going out. Now some clouds come in on Saturday, 69, almost reaching 70 there. 70s will be reached Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Monday, 77 degrees. Very pleasant, very beautiful. This time of year, it's really been very stunning with the uh, spring blooms that have been happening. Now if you are planning on getting your own garden or if you're just planning on enjoying the spring blooms that have been happening around the city and the state, you can see here that here are some popular Colorado flowers. Now you've got your bulbs, your annuals, and your perennials. Some species of these that are quite beautiful the, for the bulbs, the delilahs, the callilies, and the gladiolus that you'll see around. Now the annuals, those are planted every year, the fountain grass, the yarrow, and the Mexican poppy. Now the perennials are the returning flowers, and those are the Colorado state flower, which is the columbine and varieties of purple, as well as blue and red, as well as the Russian sage and the geranium flower. Now I hope you're enjoying all this spring weather, all of these spring blooms, and that's all for weather. Up next, sports with Tim McCall. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Yes. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchooled.com. Good evening, I'm Tim McCall, here to keep you updated with all the latest and greatest in the world of Ram sports. The Colorado State men's golf team is in action today at the University of Wyoming in the Cowboy Classic Tournament. The 18-team tournament is in its third and final round today, after the first two rounds were completed yesterday. Through 36 holes, the Rams find themselves in sixth place after shooting a plus two as a team. With a strong round today, CSU could pass Sacramento State, who is only one stroke ahead of CSU, and Wichita State, who is only two strokes ahead. To do that, the Rams will rely on Jake Stariano, who has posted the fifth best individual score of the tournament thus far. As the tournament winds down today, the Rams will look to finish off strong and climb the tournament leaderboard. Be sure to check out Collegian.com to see if your Rams can earn a top three finish in the Cowboy Classic. Yesterday, the CSU football team made an exciting announcement regarding their new on-campus stadium, and more specifically, the field itself. The field will be known as Sunny Lubick Field, the same name as the field in the old Hughes Stadium. The new field will be a synthetic turf playing surface. Joe Parker, CSU's Director of Athletics, explains that CSU made the choice to use a synthetic, synthetic turf because it represents the most consistent playing surface available today. In addition, the field will have Sonny Lubick's name printed at four different areas surrounding the field so that each fan and camera will be able to see the name of the field. The field will also feature a green, gold, and white stripe design that runs along the sideline from 25-yard line to 25-yard line where each team is positioned on the side of the field. Installation of the new turf surface will begin this week and is expected to be finished in the early weeks of May. The field will get its first taste of action on August 26, when CSU opens their season against Oregon State. This weekend, the CSU club men's lacrosse team will play their most important game of the season. The CSU Rams will take on the Colorado Buffalo in the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Showdown, which will take place this Saturday at noon on the Lagoon Field here on the CSU campus. The Rams are ranked 10th in the country and will be looking to upset the number three ranked Buffalo in the final game of the regular season. 
In addition to the CECU Senior Night festivities, which will take place before the game, there will also be multiple food trucks around the field to keep the fans' stomachs full while they watch the game. Don't miss this exciting event this Saturday as the Rams trying to gain momentum before heading into the playoffs. That's all we have for sports tonight, but don't go anywhere because up next, it's Ryan Christ with the latest in entertainment. You are listening to 90.5 KCSU Fort Collins with DJ Meanby. DJ Nightshade. DJ Wildcard. Music to me is one of the best creative outlets that I can think of. An escape from the real world. Music to me is an expression of love. To go from like folk to hip hop to like classic rock, 1960s bossa nova. With music, there's like no boundaries. I work here because I love music and you do too. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day he brings a girl home and she's allergic to cats. <laughs> Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. What is up, Rams? My name is Ryan Christ, and I'm your entertainment anchor tonight. And boy, do we have some great entertainment news, starting off with a great movie. This past weekend, the new Mission Impossible movie has been announced, and that filming has begun. This announcement was prompted by the director when he posted on his Instagram a picture of his clapboard in Paris, France, with the caption, Light the Fuse. Cruz will be joined by Re Rebecca Ferguson, who portrayed Lisa Faust in Rogue Nation Returns for Mission Impossible 6 alongside Superman actor Henry Cavill. Soon after this was released, paparazzi captured Tom Cruise filming a sequence for the upcoming film that had something to do with a helicopter. We all know Tom Cruise loves to do his own stunts, which were very apparent in the last two, as we saw him dangle from a taking off plane and as he climbed the world's tallest building. Earlier this year, the director on the Empire's, Compat Com Empire's podcast hinted that he might have found something to top the Rogue One stunt. When he told Tom Cruise about it, he said, that's awesome, I can't wait to fall off of that. Fans are already specu speculating that he is maybe gonna be falling off a helicopter this time, but who knows? I guess we'll all have to wait and see. All I know is that I cannot get that stupid theme thong stuck out of my head for the life of me. Last weekend, Shia LaBeouf's 2014 film, Man Down, got a sh uh, sh shown in a select theater in London. And to this Shia surprise, it only sold one ticket. The film stars Shia LaBeouf as a Marine in search of his estranged son in Afghanistan. Now this kind of surprised me. While this movie is older and probably wasn't hyped up, I still feel like it would have sold more than just one ticket. I mean, he's Shia LaBeouf, not Adam Sandler. And one of his movies, one of his more recent works was a smashing hit. I mean, we all saw Actual Cannibal Shia LaBeouf by Rob Cantor. That one got like 46 million views. How did he go from there to like one? I just don't get it. In some more movie news, a local game store here in Fort Collins hosted their own movie night and it got way more than one person. At Griffin Games and Comics, on Sunday they were holding their very own classic movie night where anyone could come in and enjoy a free classic movie. <laughs> they even got to enjoy great snacks from the Purple Cup Cafe. He spoke more to the owner about how he came up with Classic Movie Night. So one of our customers came to us and he wanted to do something with the store and his thought was he wanted to do a Classic Movie Night. So we haven't been doing it long, but he's a... Uh, uh, great long-time customer and he's excited for it so we said oh, by all means that's uh, half of our events here are, are motivated by customers along with these weekly classics they even have an entire showroom to feature in a nerd from things like movie posters to action figures they have it all I spoke with the outreach coordinator who told me more about their popular items uh, so from miniatures to board games so miniatures are uh, large-scale tabletop games. We also have 
um, smaller board games. We also have card games as well, um, ranging from interests uh, all over from history to arts and culture to um, to wars as well. And also same goes for comics. We have comics for just about anybody. Um, ranging for kids to adults, um, from superhero fans to sci-fi fans to horror fans, uh, as well as comedy as well. There's a whole range of stuff. With all this great merchandise and their great classic movies, I know I'm going to be headed back. To find out more about these awesome events, go to griffingames.ncomics.com. In case you didn't know, last week a team named Jacob Stoudenmeyer from Arizona asked Emma Stone to his prom by making a parody of her video from Another Day of Sun from La La Land. This video had a lot of extras, creative filmmaking, and some great lyrics explaining how he even looks like Ryan Gosling and lives in her hometown. After this was posted, Jacob held his breast waiting for a response, and after about two days, Emma Stone finally did, and unfortunately she declined, saying, I can't tell you what an honor that was and how much I smiled throughout that entire beautifully orchestrated video. I'm in London working, but I hope you have the best time at prom, and I'm grateful you thought of me. Thank you. P.S. I do see Ryan Gosling around the eyes. Love, Emma. In an interview with Jacob, hosted by Good Morning America, he said what inspired him to make this video was that a kid a couple years ago prom posed to Miley Cyrus, so he wanted to follow it up, and he liked La La Land, so he thought, why not? While he is still dateless to prom, he is going with some friends. And I mean, we all know the old saying. If Emma Stone's working in London and can't go to prom with you, you go with your friends. In some more celebrity news, we got another update on our favorite fake family, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yes, in case you missed them, because Lord knows I have, the youngest Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, will be getting her own show called Life of Kylie, which will follow her in her amazing professional life and her ever-interesting personal life. Now, you're probably thinking, man, this guy really hates the Kardashians. And whether or not that's true, that rant will definitely not fit within my segment. But oh, I only have one problem with this. As of now, there are 13 seasons of this show, and this makes the ninth spin-off they have ever gotten. Nine. I mean, what else don't we know about their everyday lives? Like, really, is the next spin-off going to be Keeping Up with the Kardashians late night, where it's just a live stream of them sleeping or something? Like, I feel like that's the only part of their life that we don't get to see throughout nine different TV shows. I just don't get it, how they can have nine different TV shows, and I can't even get my 1998 Szechuan sauce back in McDonald's. I just, I just don't get it. Anyways, if you're a fan, or if you're like me, get ready for more Kardashians. Well, that's all the entertainment I have, but to make sure to tune in for tomorrow night